mom of one of my players almost gets him kicked out of my game. I run two D&D games, one I run at a local game shop. It is family friendly and I welcome anyone who can behave and take a shower. Second game is run at my house with me and my four oldest friends. We get drunk and screw around in the campaign. It's a campaign we have been running since 5e first came out and is very much built around our terrible humor. Very not public play space friendly. New player is a nice nine-year-old kid named Simon. He loves playing in my public game and found out I run another game. Asked if he could join and I told him it wasn't really open to new players. He was cool about it. Simon is a good kid. Simon's mom found out later when she picked him up and tried to force him into my other game. I had to get the owner to help me calm her down and get her to leave. Simon was in tears apologizing. I felt so bad for him. Owner told mom if she ever set foot in his store again, he'd ban her and Simon from the store and get the police involved if he had to. She left in a hurry and almost T-boned a car in her rush to leave. Simon's dad drops him off now. He came to me and the owner and begged our forgiveness. Turns out mom wanted Simon in my game as a form of babysitting so she could go out and party with her other terrible mom friends. We told him as long as it's him dropping Simon off there won't be any issues. He's a good kid and I'd hate to lose our monk. Update 1 Hey everyone, it has been pure chaos the last few days, but after everyone was so nice, I figured I'd let you guys know what has happened since it's mostly good news and should put some minds at ease. I ran into Simon's dad and his sister Anna at the store and they invited me out to lunch to chat. Simon's doing pretty well, all things considered. Dad says he and mom were already most of the way through the divorce process, but he and his almost ex-wife agreed to keep it quiet until they had finalized some agreements. Mom showed her ass yet again and basically admitted she didn't want Simon very often and negotiated for some money in exchange for giving full custody to dad with a few holiday visitations, if she can make it. She's moving a few states away to live with some of her friends from college. He doubts they see her more than once a year, if that. He said it went as well as he could have hoped. He's just glad it's almost over. Auntie Anna, as Simon calls her, is dad's sister. She's stepping in to help with Simon while dad juggles everything. She brought him to the shop this weekend and she hung out by me while I ran the game so she could learn. Everyone had a good time. Even got a few giggles from Anna, so I'll consider that a GM's job well done for first impressions of the hobby. Shame the first RP she had to see was me as Marty the Farty Lizard Folk Merchant, NPC, that they ran into last session. Lots of hissing and farting noises out of me for 15 minutes. Simon was able to pass enough con saves to buy what the party needed from Marty, discounts in exchange for risk of poison damage, and they tricked the corrupt town guard into accidentally arresting themselves due to an elaborate performance by the bard and Simon's monk. Game went well. Anna and I talked while Simon looked at all the dice sets for an hour after the game. She's been pulled into a parent group of parents of kids in Simon's class. I guess Simon has all the other kids wanting to try playing, and since my private game is on hiatus for at least six months, I offered to run one if the parents were comfortable with it. I end up getting added to the group chat and Anna's house is where we're gaming. Next day, Anna and I met up for lunch and I helped her put together a gaming space in her living room. A few of the moms came by to drop of some snacks and to introduce themselves in person. I feel like I've been adopted into a family of families, but I don't even have a family of my own. Everyone has been great. I'm so glad Simon is surrounded by these people and not people like his mom. The kids were all very well behaved. Anna and I were a bit nervous being the chaperones for a bunch of kids, but Simon's friends are great. They all had a blast making characters and doing the test encounters I had for them. There's a girl that made certain she was always seated next to Simon and barely takes her eyes off him. She has a huge crush on him, but don't think he even realizes what's going on. It's adorable. Parents were all happy with game night, and honestly, I liked running for all kids way more than I had expected. Anna and I agreed we were fine with doing this regularly, so now Anna and I are the game masters to everyone. Also, I'm now Uncle Caleb to Simon. Not sure what I did to earn the title, and I definitely didn't get emotional when he called me that. So that's about it. I still run two games. I've been adopted by a nine-year-old, and I've taken over Anna's living room with minis and battle mats. 
Simon is an incredible little dude and I'm glad to have met him and his amazing family, one parent excluded. Update 2. Hello everyone. While this is an update, there isn't much of a horror story anymore. Just some updates on my situation and the people in my life. I wasn't expecting as much interest after the initial drama, but I've also been made aware just how much of a dense goober I am partially thanks to folks on Reddit pointing some things out. My nephew Simon is the coolest little dude in the universe. His interest in board games is starting to really take off ever since Anna brought him over to my place and he saw my shelf of games. He absolutely loves Ticket to Ride. I gave it to him and he wants to play it next game night. The public game party is now chasing the big bad through a few portals leading to a chronomancer's domain in the stomach of a kraken, so that should be fun. Simon has expressed interest in learning to DM. I'll teach him everything I know. I would gladly play in any campaign that boy runs. He said he has some ideas and I intend to help him make those into dice-based reality. As for how he's handling the situation with his mom, Simon is doing well, but he struggles. He's very clingy toward Drew. I'm betting this is normal for kids in Simon's situation. Simon has Drew, Anna, and a good head on his shoulders. He'll be fine. Drew and Simon spend a lot of their time together just doing little projects. They're currently putting together a puzzle while watching Simon's shows. Drew told me this was a once-a-month thing due to his work schedule. Now it's several times a week and they both love it. Drew did need a little time to decompress from dad mode, so one night he and I went out to a bar for a few drinks. He told me about his plans to take Simon out of town on a father-son trip. Simon's just excited the hotel has a pool. Drew says he doesn't plan to date or do anything anytime soon. The ink's still dry on the divorce papers. I think single dad is what I want to be right now. He wants to focus on Simon and figuring out what life looks like for them going forward. As for Anna, she was initially busy balancing work, Simon, game nights, and a bunch of other responsibilities since she stepped up to help Drew. Things stabilized a lot faster than anyone expected with a, the divorce resolving smoothly and Simon being the easiest child in the world to take care of. Now that Drew is using vacation time, she has had a bit more free time until he goes back to full-time work. So she's been catching up on some of her hobbies like baking and playing games on her Switch. I had to come over and run the cables to hook it up to her TV because she couldn't reach. She also needed my help setting up her Wi-Fi when she got a new router, and she has had multiple issues with her laptop that I've had to resolve for her. That woman is brilliant in every other regard, but truly clueless when it comes to tech. But I was paid for my ticket resolutions in homemade meals, so I'll call it even. The more time I spent with Anna, the more confident I got that asking her out was the right call. So I asked her out and she said yes. Unfortunately, Anna gets migraines semi-regularly and one hit her just before our date. I came over and she was visibly miserable, but trying to convince me it was okay and we'd still go out. I practically had to order her to go get into bed, got her migraine pills and some water for her, blacked out the curtains and told her to call if she needed anything. She called me a few hours later asking for something to eat because she was feeling better so I got her some dinner and ate with her. She kept trying to apologize but I told her to make it up to me with another date next day, which we were able to actually go on. It was a fantastic night, had some amazing food and walked around town and talked, then went back to drop her off and we sat out in my car for another hour and talked. The last thing she said before getting out and running in was, you're my boyfriend now by the way before shutting the door. I had no intention to argue even if she'd left me time to. Since then we've gone on a few more dates with our free time and we're both really happy with how things are going. It turns out Anna was a few days away from asking me out herself if I didn't make a move. She also hasn't stopped teasing me about Marty and his farts. And I told her about the werewolf Pierre Wolf I'm using soon and she won't stop patting my head and calling me Le Good Boy. I'm not giving her character previews anymore. I guess that's it. In the last few weeks, my life has changed so drastically, it's insane. This may be strange to say, but thank you for sharing in this internet sharing circle thing that this became for me.